Hello friend, welcome to this video. This is going to be another video on socket programming in C. So uh, today in this video we are going to create a simple TCP client and server program. So the server is going to provide a simple service to the client and the client is going to request for that simple service and that simple service is the current date and time which the server is going to return to, to the client. So if you are new to my channel then please subscribe and hit the bell icon also and you have already subscribed then thanks now let's begin the code first of all we are going to write the server part and now we are going to write the our include files which we need to include first of all is the standard input output file which we require in every program in standard library and rest are some kind of socket file required for the socket programming next is net inet slash in dot h include unistd dot h and the one we require now is the time for the time we need the time file time header file to be included that's all the header file we require now we are, we are going to define something called backlog which we are going to require backlog is the uh, uh, number of clients which can connect at, this, at a time now let's write the main function ok these are two asterisk ok now first of all we are going to take the port number as an ar argument with the when we run the file so let's first check that if argc is not equal to 2 this means the port is not a, 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 a given if port is not given then we are going to return uses percentile s and then port arg v 0 Now the port is going to be AT ASCII to integer. Yes, it's ASCII to integer. Now we have the port number. Let's print it out. Now let's run this simple program if it's working correctly or not. GCC server dot c out server ah. ok so a simple mistake it should be argv so now we can see no error now we can to run our program so you can see if we do not provide the port it's going to exit and give us this statement uses our slash port number like 4444 now you can see we have the port number given at the runtime. Now let's continue with the rest of the part and client. With this variable we are going to count the num uh, number of client, the current number of client which is working. This is going to be socket file descriptor socket affinity Soak stream. So soak stream is basically the TCP one. Struct. So soak ADDR in server address. 
now we need to provide some information to the server address structure sin family if I oh that's AF okay now it's correct server address dot sin ADDR oh. dot S ADDR now it's correct I N A D D R any okay then in the next we need to write the port sin port is equals to S turns port till here we have specified the everything which we require now we need to bind it we need to bind the address and the port together so that we can have a specific structure for where the client can uh, connect let's bind it's not df oh it's I have written df I need to return fd I always mix these kind of spelling mistakes just <laughs> some character after and before one another so we are in the bind now first is socket FT soak show cap FT struct choke DDR and this pointer and the address of server address then the size of server address now bind is complete let's print a message here so that we can see bind now we are going to if this command runs if this line runs successfully or we can say command anything if this runs successfully then we have to listen for the client listen socket ft file file descriptor now the backlog comes in another statement we can make listening for the clients So listening for the client means the survey has started. Okay. Now let's do one thing. Start run it till here. So that we can see if we have any error. Also there is no error. So you can see no error anything. Nothing. So it's running correctly till now. Now we need. Now here we implement a loop. Where the client will connect. And it will get the correct time. Get the get the correct response basically what we want the client to give and then next client will come so there's a process so that's why we need a loop here I. so let's create i here i int i is equal to one so now we need a client socket So this is the accept when the client request when the client connect client and server connected with each other. Socket FD now null null okay. Now we need to line. we need time first is the end client we need some parameters here so first of all I will make write some code before it current time and time address of current time okay now we have it 
do one more thing incline plus increment it now we need to write here the current time current time ok now we need to send it to the client client socket c time address of current time in 30 and then 0 so that's all for this part now we will run this part compile it so no error no warning now you can see port 444 that's we have provided ok it's blind and is listening for the client now let's check if it's working correctly or not we use nc netcat tool so you can see we have the netcat tool with, this, with the same port and we have send request to the server so you can see on the server client 1 requested for time at Wednesday September 26, 23, 26, 24 and 2018 that's all the data we need to send to the server now server receive the same data now you can close this and again send one more request so you can see now client 2 and at the different time we can see some changes in the second from 24 to 14 so you can see it's giving the correct second and we can even match those things those are same you can see Wednesday day September 26, 23 uh, 26 min 49 second 2018 so you can see those are basically the same data we are getting so now we can fully sh we are fully sure the server program is running successfully so now we will close it and now we will go on to the client part now we will write the client file Some of the things are going to remain the same like these header files. Till here it's going to remain the same. We just need to remove the backlogs. So till here it need to be the same. Now we'll compile the client. Now we'll run the client. Okay. So till now it's running successfully. No problem. No war. No error. No warning. Now let's create socket for this for the client also. Af int so stream and then zero now we need we receive some response so we need a we need some a variable to hold that value so I think the 30 is enough and then struct so LDRN server address I think we can copy it from there this is the same basically we can copy it from here it's basically the same now we need to connect to the server struct the pointer and the address of server address and the size of server address we can see the same thing but in the server we have this as the bind because server need to bind and the client only need to connect and when its work is finished it just disconnect just disconnects but the server remains at the address a specific address in the port for long time if it does not remain then the client will not be able to connect and then what's the benefit of having a server now we are going to print a statement from the client connect it to the server now 
now we are going to receive something from the server response here 29 and the last one the uh, 30 bit, bit goes for the end character the string and that is null character uh, this this character at the end of the string so that's why it's not uh, 30 here it's 29 because we need to end the character so that it knows the character end here that's all stuff I think you can understand if we are at the stage of socket programming so I assume that you know all these things now we're going to print that data time from server ls because it's, it's a string response I think that's uh, complete the client part is also completed here so let's oh, compile it again so we have some errors error and the line number 26 20, oh it should be printf these mistakes are just because I write code also in python language so there is no some no termination required so just practice mistakes and again one more spelling mistake now no error no warning client 4444 because it does not receive anything else server so it just disconnected not disconnect just doesn't get now we'll run our server at the specific port client is ok now we run the client so you can see port 400 let's remove this it's just creating unnecessary let's see again now we can see <laughs> again the server is running successfully and the client is saving the data from the server successfully so that's example of a simple client server architecture how simple is more level client server architecture work now that's how it bigger big scale mass server architecture just the difference is that they are big in scale so they need huge amount of hardware huge amount of they transfer huge amount of data this is just a basic uh, level of the client server program so i hope you all got the concept uh, clearly this is just a simple example where we transfer this the date and time service pro provider we can say it a daytime time pro provider you can build more complicated thing with this like you can the server can provide some more complicated services like the client send a file it is stored there and lay it around any client can see it view the, that file some kind of FTP server just transfer that file from the client to the server oh, we can build some more complicated things like and the client provide a command and the server run it on the server and then uh, give the response back to the client so that the client can get a feel that is running the command on its own computer so like in SSH or telnet basically we can say SSH type of thing I am talking about here so I hope you are you have got the concept clearly and if you just enjoyed this video then hit the like button and I hope you enjoyed it so if you have any problem if still some concept are not clear or I have I am wrong anything about then please uh, comment below thank you and have a nice day